Hey y'all, I'm Graham, and uh, the other day I saw this egg carton thing, and I got kind of inspired. Uh, I thought it maybe could be used as some really cool, like, terrain, some sort of power generator or something. So uh, I'm going to show you how I did it. Let's get to it. Uh, first, I cut off the superfluous bits. I really just wanted the bottom. Actually, this, this front flap kind of looks like some sort of, I don't know, barrier cement edge I don't know something we'll save it for later uh, then I had to make sure the egg carton upside down was gonna be flat so I had to cut off these little bits that kind of extended uh, that way it's gonna lay flat on the table uh, the big pieces in the middle are these cool kind of pyramid shapes so we're gonna hold on to those too. Uh, get like an Aztec vibe from those right All right, so once you've cut off all these different pieces, uh, I, I'm going to turn this in actually two different generators. Uh, I felt like the, the 12 looked very egg carton-y, but if you break it up into two two by threes, you know, I think that looks pretty good. Uh, I used white glue to adhere it to a cardstock base that I cut out of, you know, cardboard. It's pretty thin cardboard, so it doesn't matter. Make sure if you try to do something like this, you want to cover all the different spots. Uh, with your white glue so that it holds really nicely. You don't want to put too much pressure on any individual joints. Um, don't forget the ones in the middle there too. You could use hot glue for the egg carton itself, but honestly the um, material that the egg carton is made out of is very porous and that always works really well for white glue. So when I cut out this, this piece of foam board that I'm gonna use as a wall here, there's a factory straight edge, and there's kind of this curvy edge that I cut jankily with my knife. So you wanna put the actual straight edge onto the card, because um, if you put the bumpy edge on it, then it's not gonna stick very well. Now that doesn't mean that your kind of janky cut edge is gonna be, it's gonna be exposed. So try to cut it as straight as you can. Um, I also, in this video, used white glue to kind of adhere um, the foam core uh, wall that I made, and honestly that probably should have been hot glue. You can see that there's a little bit of the card stock sticking out of the bottom. I just cut that off with an X-Acto knife once this dried. And look at that! It's uh, I measured it to be about the right height so that little miniatures could be looking out over the edge. Perfect. Great cover. So now uh, we're gonna decorate this card with a little bit of texture. I've got two different kinds of rocks, literal actual rocks. They're from a, like a rough sand set. And then um, also like the pink insulation foam. Uh, when you pick at that, it ends up looking like really good rock formations. So now this isn't load bearing. White glue works just fine for this. Um, and I, I put it in a couple different spots on each of my generators. Um, and I tried to cover up the lip to uh, kind of hide the fact that it's an egg carton stuck to a card. I wanted to kind of blend in with the surrounding terrain. Uh, also, one of my friends suggested, hey, this should be like cracked open with stuff oozing out of it. And I said, you know what? Good idea. So we're making kind of a, uh, a sort of gash in it um, that's sort of a diagonal. It's kind of like a lightning bolt look. Uh, and then we're going to create some goop using hot glue. And um, I should have done a big old dollop of hot glue and then let that dry and then do another big old dollop of hot glue to get sort of like this wave ripple effect. It wasn't quite able to do that. Um, the hot glue stayed pretty warm for a while and so it was pretty oozy. But, um, you know, honestly, it, it's, it's a really good consistency for this kind of look. So still looks good. Uh, I actually made a mistake and kind of dribbled some on the the other parts of the power cell that I didn't mean to, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll go with it. Happy accidents and all that, right? All right, so it's time to put some paint on here. I'm gonna spray paint it black to give it a nice shadowy undercoat. Uh, and when you are spray painting something like this, don't focus on spraying any of the raised parts. That's gonna get covered up with another layer of spray paint, so you're really just spraying the shadows here. And if it's a little bit lighter on top, 
that's totally fine. So then we're gonna follow it up with a sort of Zenithal style highlight with uh, gray spray paint. Coming at it from the top down and I maybe lightened it up too much, it would have been nice to keep the high contrast from those shadows, but certainly not a big deal. Uh, the gray is gonna make it look kind of metallic and industrial and it's gonna be awesome. Uh, you can also see that the gray is kind of shading the top of these nice little curved areas, which looks good. So we're going to start dry brushing and this is uh, just interior wall paint. I got a sample. Uh, they're like less than $4 for really high quality paint. This is an off white. It's actually a very light gray and that's going to be perfect. I didn't want it to be too stark. Also, I'm going to be dry brushing with a makeup brush. Uh, this one's actually from Martha Stewart. Thanks, Martha. Uh, we're going to be dry brushing uh, from the top down. Uh, and we don't need to dry brush everything. So I'm going uh, perpendicular to the areas that I want to highlight. So uh, in this case, vertically to ho highlight those horizontal lines. And you can see I'm also getting the top of those little curved bits. Uh, once it's been dry brushed, uh, let's focus on the base a little bit. I'm actually going to paint the base a dark brown. Uh, I thought the gray, like astro granite style would look fine, except just a little bit too homogenous. I really wanted the metal to stand out from the brown ground. Uh, not using a big thick makeup brush for this because, uh, it is going to just be really sloppy. I'm going to end up getting a lot of brown on my infrastructure. So instead I'm just using a synthetic nylon kind of brush uh, with a nice big flat uh, surface area so it covers a whole lot and now we're just going to paint up the rocks uh, these are ultimately going to be dry brushed as well but I want to make sure that I leave the uh, light gray highlights on the metal uh, I also put on some of that pink insulation foam for like a big old rock here on the edge and uh, if you leave some parts of this black that's totally fine it's just going to look like a shadow so uh, each of those little pods is going to have like this glowing light in the middle, but that glowing light is going to need a light undercoat so that that light shows up, that light color, it's going to be blue. So I dry brushed from the middle on out uh, to kind of be a base for like this glowing effect. And then I really want, again, this is a bright color, so it needs to be painted on top of white so it shows up pretty well. Uh, so yeah, then I just painted on a solid opaque white. Uh, and um, I also thinned down my white paint a little bit and tried to paint this goop area. This is going to be a bright green probably. And uh, I really wanted to uh, make sure that there was still some texture showing through. So that's why it's thinned down. Uh, so there's still some gray that you can see through the white. It's going to be great. So I'm using this light blue paint to create my glowing effects and we're going to dry brush those glowing effects on first. Uh, the blue really pops because we did a dry brush of white underneath this. Um, and then we've got sort of this, uh, you know, light blue light source, uh, but I really want a gradient there. So I'm going to paint the solid blue in a rim around the outside. So it's effectively the darkest area of the light. Then the dry brushed blue is sort of in the middle as a lighter tone. And then we're going to follow that up with a thin down white paint, like just a dab in the center. And it's going to create a nice little uh, gradient for us. And I, here I actually made the paint a little bit too watery. I had too much water on my brush, so it was kind of hard to control. But um, because it was pretty thin when it dried, uh, it ended up not being too harsh at all. And so now we've got sort of this three color gradient to create this glowing effect uh, and it, I think it looks really great from a distance so uh, back to dry brushing and we're gonna highlight all these rocks that we got going on um, I used a, a smaller makeup brush so I had better control over this uh, kind of thing and uh, I wanted to make sure I got all the brown areas including those little uh, nooks in between the different generator pod things I don't have to worry about painting on the white goop right now. Uh, that's why we're dry brushing at this stage and we'll end up doing the goop last. So we don't have to worry about covering that up with our dry brush. Uh, so yeah, that goop, I wanted it to be a really bright green. It's in contrast to the glowing blue lights above and it, green goo just screams industrial waste. So we're going to thin it down. Again, I really want the shadows from the white and the gray uh, that I painted on earlier to kind of show through and give this some texture. 
And I just got to be careful not to cover the ground or else I'm going to have to go back and touch it up. And then what if I paint the brown on the goo? Um, I don't show it here, but I actually also did a coat that was uh, mixed in the green with white paint to lighten it up. And I just put that on the raised areas of the goop to give it even more dimension. And overall, I love this. I think it turned out great. Uh, I feel like the models really are in their element. Uh, with this, it's just a couple of bright colors to contrast all the gray and the brown and the grim dark, uh, with a couple of accent pieces, specifically the lights, the green goop, and uh, that little brown rock makes for great cover too. So thanks for hanging out with me, learning how I did this egg carton project. It was a ton of fun. It took me probably about four hours across three different sessions to do, letting paint dry and glue dry and things like that. Uh, and uh, I'm really excited to use this in my games. I put those walls on the edge of the egg carton so I can stick it up against a building and it looks like it's kind of part of that structure too. So uh, again, really quick, easy, and I think it looks good. Let me know in the comments if you have any other thoughts or ways that I can improve this. And uh, thanks for watching.